Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome to Out and About on the Think Tech Live streaming network series. I'm your host, Winston Welch, and I am delighted you're joining us today. Where every other week we explore a variety of topics, organization, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. Joining me in the studio today, I am most pleased to have Sean Hamamoto and James Skizuski from the Honolulu Neighborhood Commission office. So welcome to the show today, gentlemen. Thank you, Winston. It's a pleasure to have you here. I think a lot of people may not even know that the neighborhood boards exist. And well, what is the neighborhood board? So if, if you could start by telling us, what, what is the neighborhood board commission sure. and what does it do? That's a great question and a great place to start. Um, well, very briefly, this neighborhood Neighborhood Commission was started over 40 years ago back in the early 1970s under the Frank Fossey administration. And at that time, uh, the administration amended the city charter to create the Neighborhood Commission office with the purpose being to increase public participation in the decisions of government. So it was, uh, was this modeled after another city or another state um, or country that you or, or? You know, to that I am not um, sure, but I can tell you we've done research and I can say that this is a very unique system we have here in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. We are the only county in the state of Hawaii that has such a system. And when I tried looking on the mainland U.S. for similar type um, board systems, I could find like maybe a couple. Uh, I know like Seattle has one and there was maybe another <clears throat> in Michigan, but it just seems that this type of community grassroots board system um, you know, in Honolulu, we're very lucky to have this system. That's here. interesting. So I was looking online, and it's, it shows about 36 different neighborhood boards, I guess, areas. That, areas. Mm -hmm. So this, the island is divided into 36, roughly. Is it by, by population or by yes. sort of historical district? Uh, yes, it's, it's by um, population, and it's something that the neighborhood commission, the commissioners actually decide upon. But you're correct, we do have 36 neighborhood board areas. Within that, we have 33 active neighborhood boards. Okay. Uh, now, we do have a couple of er areas that um, are not active, and they are, these are primarily like the industrial areas, mm -hmm. like for example, Sand Island, where there's not too many people there. Or the airport. E exactly, but most of our um, you know regular living communities all have neighborhood boards around this whole island. You said the neighborhood commission uh, decides that. What is the Neighborhood Commission? So the Neighborhood Commission is the commission that we work with. Um, they're a board of volunteers, um, some appointed by the mayor, some appointed by the city council. Basically, they set policy. Um, they are responsible for um, amending or reviewing the neighborhood plan, which is um, basically our um, Bible or um, general procedures. Um, and they also adjudicate any complaints that come out. Um, so that's the role of the commission. So we work with them um, in partnership to help oversee all 33 boards around our island. Okay, so there's sort of a uh, civilian oversight com um, component yes, of Yes, that's of that. a good way to put it. And that's then they're appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the uh, city council. The city yes. council. And how many people are on that commission? Uh, currently we have seven. Seven. Is that the full number? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then the neighborhood boards are roughly divided by population? Yes, roughly. Um, you know, that's something the commission currently, um, they're looking at because as you know, with all the new developments and communities, our demographics have changed. So I think we need to change with the times. Mm -hmm. And so I know that's something that the commission um, will be looking at, you know, in the next year or two is to um, see if the current lines are still appropriate or relevant. And if not, what can we do to adjust it? Okay, and so when you, so we've got these neighborhood boards, there's about 33 neighborhood boards. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us, James, what is, what is the role of the neighborhood board? So if we go for each neighborhood, we've got 33 of these spaced around the island, what does a neighborhood board do? I, th I think most essentially our neighborhood boards are like town halls where this gives the community a chance to come and talk face to face with the people who affect change around them. We have representatives from the police department who are there every meeting. We have representatives from the fire department. We have a board of water supply rep who comes and reports on just main breaks in the area and announcements on construction and um, infrastructure improvements in the area. So it's just a chance for the community to come and ask questions about what's going on in their neighborhoods. And it also gives them a chance to talk to their legislators. We have a representative from the mayor's office. We have a representative from the governor's office all our state reps 
the state house representatives, they, they're all there, the state senators are there. So it just gives a chance for just the community to communicate with the people who represent them. And you would re it's really good to see the differences in talking to someone face to face and see how seriously they're taking you rather than electronically or over the phone. So you go to an, an average meeting is about, is it once a month? On average, yeah, all boards meet on average about once a month, and the meetings, depending on the agenda, anywhere from two to three hours, give or take. Two to three hours, okay. Mm -hmm. And in full disclosure, I am a member of Neighborhood Board Five, which is <laughs> St. Louis Heights, Kapahulu, Diamond Head, which is I always thought a kind of a strange yes. <laughs> breakdown of the area. I can mm -hmm. see like Diamond Head and Kapahulu, mm -hmm. uh, but the St. Louis Heights part kind of throws me every time, you know, it's a yes. sort of a, an ahupua approach, but a yeah. little bit different. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I wondered how that got um, yeah, decided. You know, that, that's a very good question. I'm sure that's back in history, someplace in the 1970s or 80s when that board was formed. But. That's exactly what Sean said earlier about how the Neighborhood Commission are looking at areas to maybe further <laughs> divide them and have them create their own neighborhood boards. Just like um, the Makakilo area is combined with the whole Kapule area subdivision, mm -hmm. which is there another area that's looking to just kind of divide further to be able to more um, centered around each of their communities. So these neighborhood boards, they are populated by people uh, like you and me. Yes, uh, um, it's all, you know, they're all volunteers. Um, Basically, all you need to be is over 18 years of age, live in the district, and be a registered um, voter. You have to be a registered voter. Actually, actually, well, you need to be a registered voter to vote, but actually, to actually run on the board, you don't. You just have to be over 18 and live in the district. Yes. So, um, you know, open to um, students, even military, anyone that lives in the district. Uh, I think it's a great system where we want to be as inclusive as possible. Mm -hmm. Can you be a green card holder and be on the board? Or yes, you, as long as you're a resident in the district and over 18. Okay, that's awesome. So it's, it is quite inclusive. Yes. Then. And how many people are on each board? Um, again, it varies from board to board. Um, some boards may have as few as maybe nine or so. Yeah. Um, other boards up to 19. How is that decided? And again, it's by uh, decided by the commission based on the population. And in determining that, it's kind of a complicated process where where they work with uh, information from you know the Census Bureau and so forth to okay. try to figure that out. Um, but I'm sure there's some type of formula they have to figure that out. So maybe that's a way that they've been able to uh, feel like there's a bit more proportional representation is with the, mm -hmm. the areas that are growing, they might add some people in the Definitely. smaller areas, might be a little bit of a smaller board. Exactly. Um, then in the neighborhood board office, how many of of you all are in the office? Okay, so we're a relatively small office, um, including myself, and uh, there's about 14 of us all together. And, uh, you know, our jurisdiction is the whole island, so it keeps us quite bu busy. But, you know, we're, it's a great team. Fourteen of you. Fourteen of us all together. Okay. And how many of those are, what, uh, we, we've got a terrific neighborhood assistant. Yes. Um, Thomas is, is ours. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, he has a hard job because he's got to, you know, set up everything and try and follow everything and help with things like Robert's rules and yes. what's, what's appropriate or what can or can't be done. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's kind of a, I don't want to say landmine to walk through, but it's it's hard to, to always know that because people get passionate about things. Yes. He'll give advice to our, our chair on things about uh, this needs to do this or that mm -hmm. or the other. Uh, how many neighborhood assistants are there like so that? So we have about seven neighborhood assistants on staff. Um, the rest of our staff consist of our um, admin, admin clerical staff. We have uh, Jefflin and Marcy. Uh, then we have our um, PR team, which is uh, James and Dylan over there. Um, then I have a deputy and a, another community relations specialist. So, you know, we're all over the place um, every day. It keeps us busy, but we all love it. Now, do you answer to the mayor's office or uh, how does... Yeah, well, definitely, you know, I am, as well as our whole office, we're all appointed by the mayor. So I report definitely to, uh, directly to the managing director's office. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. You're all appointed by the mayor? Yes, we're all appointees. None of us are civil service. Ooh, okay, so, but hopefully you just get to keep your jobs after. Yeah, we'll, we'll, see. <laughs> okay, we'll see. That's uh, everything. So when people are running for a board position, because these are all elected positions, mm -hmm. how often does that happen and what's the procedure for that? Okay, um, good question. So we have our board elections on odd number of years, every two years. Our, so our next election is coming up next year in 2019. 
Um, so maybe we can come on again to promote that as it gets nearer. But <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, so we are, um, I think this fall we're going to start um, just behind the scenes administratively um, getting everything set um, for the elections. So that would be coming up the next year. Yes, um, January or February. Now these elections are not done with paper ballots. Yes, um, so um, this was a conscious effort on our part, one, to, um, it's good for the environment. Um, we made an effort to try to save paper. And also, um, just because we are in the digital age now, and it does save us money, um, so I can say that the, uh, the neighborhood board elections went online um, um, several years ago, I believe back in 2009. Um, what was different in the most recent neighborhood board election was that instead of, um, we usually have to contract out services to run these elections, um, but what we did differently last year was we actually worked in-house with our own um, Department of Information Technology to run the elections in-house in as opposed to going to, to our vendor. And I believe that saved us about thirty or $40,000 of mm -hmm. taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna, and, and because it was um, relatively very successful, we're gonna do that again. Now, how, how do people even uh, know that these elections are happening and how would they become uh, candidates or, or get their names out there if they're, if they're interested in that? Yeah, so as the time draws near, we will be doing a big um, public outreach push. Um, we put in ads in the newspaper uh, midweek. We put um, advertisements in our city buses. We buy advertisements on our city buses. We make appointments um, with a lot of the um, network morning shows um, to go in the morning to talk about mm -hmm. it. Maybe we'll come here again, um, mm -hmm. putting the words out just through our newsletters, um, any way we can, social media to get the word out. So on average, you said between nine and 19 people on a board. I think ours has 15. Mm -hmm. So um, you're looking at hundreds of people that are serving. Yes, I, I would say in total there's about a, roughly 430 volunteer board members on this island, so that's quite a bit. And is every board up for election every time? Yes, yes, okay. every So board it's like the up. House of Representatives, everyone's, everyone's every on. Every two years, yes. Do you have any problem finding people to run for these? Um, you know, I think it uh, depends on the area. Um, you know, in certain areas can be quite competitive, um, in other areas not so much. It really depends on the community. Depends on the community. So, how 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 are there are there vacant spots right now on any of the boards that you're aware? Of? Yes. Um, so I know we do have some vacancies. They are listed on our website, and you know, and we understand. You know, like I said, these are all volunteers. Um, they don't get paid a, a dime, um, but yet you know they they volunteer quite a significant amount of time, uh, not only to attend these meetings monthly, but also you know to be in contact with their community. Mm -hmm. And what happens is um, you know sometimes people um, for a variety of reasons. I think. The most common reason we have gotten for people resigning from boards is that simply they move out of the district. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a common reason. And then also you have a change in lifestyles, new job, um, you know, have to take care of family, things like that. So there are a variety of reasons, but more often than not, we can find people to take their place in the community. So, and, and if that happens, I think uh, I would encourage people to go onto your website, which is Yes, uh, our website is... And what is the neighbor, oh, it's a neighborhood board website? So it's just honolulu.gov okay. slash NCO. Okay. And then you can follow the links. We have a whole bunch of tabs on the left side, and you just click the neighborhood board tab. Okay. And then it will have, we have a board vacancy list. Okay. Yeah, so it's just another link. You hit it, and then we'll list the boards that have all the vacancies available and what sub-districts. Because some of these neighborhood boards are further divided just mm -hmm. to provide each area within each community or neighborhood board uh, further representation by people who live in their certain sub-districts. And that's the case in mine, too. Exactly. So if, if it, there is a break, we can go there, we can go to the meeting, talk to the chair, and say, I'm interested in this, and then the chair presents your uh, sort of a background? Exactly, exactly. We have volunteers who come, who come up and have themselves um, acknowledged by the chair, who they in turn introduce themselves to everybody. They kind of give everyone a brief bio about themselves. Yep. And then usually a board member in most times will just nominate them to become part of the board because what in my experience is all boards want to be have full staffing sure. and have fully completed throughout their whole community. So it's rare do we ever get a board that's never welcoming volunteers. So that's why whenever we're out in the community and we're in areas where neighborhood boards have vacancies, we make it a very big 
um, conscious effort for us to tell the community members in each area that there are neighborhood board seats open and please okay. go and volunteer in their neighborhoods. And they can also get their meeting minutes and agenda items on for each of the neighborhood boards online. there as well. Online yes. at honolulu.gov slash NCO. Yes. Please visit us. And then go down from there. So uh, we're going to take a very short break here, but I'm Winston Welch. This is Out and About on the Think Tech Live streaming network series. And today we're talking with Sean Hamamoto, the executive director, and James Skizuski, our public relations specialist from the Honolulu Neighborhood Commission office. We'll be back in a minute, so stay tuned for more of the story. Aloha, we're back, we're live. I'm Winston Welch, and this is Out and About on the Think Tech Streaming Network series. We're talking with Sean Hamamoto and James Skizuski from the Neighborhood Commission Office, and I appreciate you both again for being here, and also for James Whitzel, Whitesell, uh, uh, another public relations specialist over at the Neighborhood Commission offices for getting this together. So, Sean, you got a background. You went to Punahou. Yes. Um, you got a BA in psychology from HPU. Yes. Uh, does that help you in your job? Every day. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and before that, you worked with the mayor's uh, and managing director's office. As a special assistant, correct. And that was with this current administration? Yes. Okay. So, uh, then you were a liaison with the city council after yes, that? Yes, I was a city council liaison. Okay, so you, I worked in between, you know, with the city council, and that must have been quite an interesting job in and of itself, yeah, too. Never a dull moment. Yeah, yes. I bet. So, <laughs> when did you uh, move over and, and and take the position that you're at right now? Um, it was almost three years ago, I believe. I started this position August fifteenth, two thousand fifteen. So it's been three years. Okay, and mm -hmm. when you you did that, you used to serve on a neighborhood board yourself. Yes, um, that's correct. Um, I was a former member of the downtown Chinatown neighborhood board number 13 um, okay. back in 2011, I believe. Okay, so you probably had to resign after you got <clears throat> this job, so you weren't overseeing yourself? Or? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it was only one term, um, you know, but... Um, you know, I, I loved it, um, but I just feel it's a blessing that I'm in this position and mm -hmm. I can continue working with the neighborhood boards. Was it a factor that you had been on a neighborhood board that got you also into this position, considering the different roles you'd been playing you in know, the administration? You know, I think that may have been a factor. Um, in addition, you know, I've been in government most of my career, so even prior to that, you know, um, I worked for the state senate before, the city council. So I've been a state senate rep to the board. I've been a city council rep to the board. I was even oh. a mayor's rep to the board. Oh. The first board meeting I ever went to was back in 1999. Okay. So I've had actually a lot of experience with neighborhood boards prior to me, you know, taking this position. So you have played a variety of things. You've, you've been connected with this. Yes. Yeah, so, you, you didn't even know it in many ways. And so it's actually, you know, to be honest, it's a dream come true. I, I feel like I've come, you know, full circle in my career to come to this point to actually heading the office. Um, a system that I've admired from the very, the first time I've ever walked into a neighborhood board meeting back in 1999, I was a fan. I thought this mm -hmm. was the greatest um, system ever. And the second thing I thought, why aren't more people here? You know, I just thought yeah. it was so great. Yeah. Um, a great community resource. So no, I'm very fortunate to be in this position. I, I enjoy working with the community. 
And yeah. where do you think the hardest job was? Was it being a, a state rep oh, representative, gosh. or the the mayor's representative, or in the role that you have now? Or uh, you know, I would say each role I've had had its challenges, but I can say of all my roles, I'm definitely enjoying this the best. Okay. Um, I mean, I just feel like this is a peak for me. Okay. I'm really happy to be here. And uh, James, you uh, are local. A local boy too. You grew up in the Kapahula area and went to Damien Memorial High School, over which is in Kalihi, isn't it? Yep. Okay, and uh, just right by the, uh, I always call it the castle, but it's the uh, the, the Bishop Museum, of course. Um, and then you went on to UH Manoa, got a degree in political science and minored in sociology. Has that helped you a lot? Is in the work that you do? Oh yes. I mean, I think it's all derived in my origin and or just in my origin of wanting to improve my community. So, I mean, I've just always been open and trying to learn as much as I can about the system in which we can help improve our own communities across the island. Well, I think that that's a, an important point is that, you know, you've got great people like you that really care about our community, uh, devoted civil servants of, that, that are really, um, you're called to something greater, which is wanting to have an involved civic society where the neighborhood board for me is, is emblematic of that uh, really fundamental grassroots participation in having community members being able to come and in their community and have their voices be heard on a variety of issues. Like you said, everybody comes, your state reps come, the senators, uh, mm -hmm. the representatives, the mayor's rep. Um, comes and those are those are actually their commissioners, aren't they? For uh, the mayor's rep, or actually, well, they're cabinet members. So most cabinet of the members. mayor's <laughs> reps are either the directors or deputy directors of the various city departments we have. Do you are you a mayor's rep in any? No, of them? because because I'm heading the commission. That that would be too much of a conflict. So once I be, took this position, so prior to this position, when I was at the MD's office, I was a mayor's rep. Mm -hmm. But once I got this position, I had to stop. Okay. Yeah. And and James, are you a uh, are you a neighborhood assistant at all? Do you ever? I was. Okay. I mean, and I really love our neighborhood assistants that we have on staff now. And I, I'm glad I was able to start as a neighborhood assistant because the ability to see communities take take part in improving itself is something I treasure and something I try and spread as when I'm out in the community putting up posters and flyers about every neighborhood's own meetings once a month. I go and I try and explain the resources available at these neighborhood board meetings. I mean, these mayor's reps, the lengths they go to to get responses for community members' concerns from broken cracks in the sidewalks to a broken drinking fountain to just why don't we have a crosswalk here? The Department of Transportation will do a study just to come back to that one concern from one community member from one neighborhood board. And if you really extrapolate that to all of the neighborhood boards across the island, our city is working very hard to get, make sure our community is heard. Yeah, and, and at that very local level where people know why the crosswalk needs to be just at that place. Yeah, I I know they, they took out the sort of ongoing thing on Date Street where they, uh, they're just redoing it. And um, my concern was the speed limit was too high because if it's just 25 people will go 40. And so, um, you know, but we have people directly there to be able to answer those questions. It may not be to our satisfaction because we do live in a society that allows for the best ideas, hopefully, to bubble to the top. But at least we can we have a, a place to air those ideas and, and, mm -hmm. and be heard. So I've been really appreciative of that. A lot of people um, can't always get to the neighborhood board meetings. Um, they're generally held at night yes. or always held at night? Yes. OK. Mm -hmm. And they're on a weeknight? Y yes. OK. And most of them are on Olelo. I would say most of them. Uh, like I said, we have 33 active boards. Um, we have near about 30 of them being broadcast or recorded and rebroadcast on that level. Wow. So, so the vast majority of them do choose to be televised. Do you have any idea how many people are watching those Olelo broadcasts? You know, I, I'm not sure. I actually would like, like to talk to Olelo to see if I could get that metric because it would be interesting to see. But I do think it's a fantastic resource because, you know, a lot of these meetings, as you said, they are at night. Um, you know, I, you know, a lot of us working people, they work hard, uh, maybe have families. I could see where it may be difficult for them to physically attend these meetings. And that's why I think it's so great that Alelo records these. So that way the community, at their own convenience from the comfort of their home, can either access these uh, recordings via the internet or watch the replays on TV on Alelo. 
So I think it's a, it's a great program. To, can to read can they find those? Uh, links on your website as well, or do they have to go to Olelo's website? Yes, we have a link on our website, and you can also go to the Olelo website as well, so either place. Or you can always feel free to just to call us, and we'll be able to help you. 768-3710. 768-3710. And that's Neighborhood Commission Office. Yes, be happy to hear from you. Oh, and, and, and you are happy to hear from me. And you, you guys actually answered the phone, which I really appreciate, too. <laughs> Thank um, you. So, People have an ability to also send in testimony or request or something like that. Is that right, James? Or how, do, how does that work? Or, exactly. Uh, so we allow community members to provide testimony, which we and then forward to the board chairs who circulate that amongst the board members themselves. And in certain cases, chairs will read the testimony aloud. And along with the video archive that's on our website, mm -hmm. we also have our very talented neighborhood assistants who are there taking notes the whole meeting. They record the meetings. And then they, their job is to go back and pretty much summarize our meetings. I mean, we're required by Sunshine Law to 30 days after the meeting have a written record of some summation of what happened at the meeting when it comes to decisions and um, what's going on, what was discussed. That's an interesting point. You mentioned the Sunshine Laws. So these boards are subject to the same laws? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Which um, so that that is why you know what, one objective of this board is to be transparent, mm -hmm. which I believe is very important. So, um, pursuant to the Sunshine Law, you know we are required to post to publicly post every board agenda a week in advance of the meeting, mm -hmm. um, so the public can know exactly what's going to be discussed. And as James says, we are then required to have available uh, minutes of the meeting, so the public can see exactly who voted or how the board voted on certain issues and so forth. I, and I, that's why I think the Olelo component is also really important because talk about sunshine. You, when you're being recorded, uh, mm -hmm. there's not. It's you either said it or you didn't, yes. right? It's a lot. It's a lot easier to watch it than to read a transcription, which uh, or not transcription, but notes. The minutes, yes. The minutes are there is as accurate as they're going to get, but nevertheless, I, I liked watching the, I like watching things from Waianae or from mm -hmm. Hawaii Kai or the North Shore and see what are their issues up there and how are they, what are they talking about and, and um, how, how do they run their boards and how spicy are their boards compared to my board, mm -hmm. you know, and you've probably seen some things getting fairly heated um, over the course of the years. Yes, but. and you know, to an extent, you know, it, it is understandable because um, you know people are passionate about their communities, mm -hmm. which they should be. Yes. Um, and so we at the neighborhood board, we encourage participation. Um, you know, everybody has a right to their own opinion, and everyone has a right to express that opinion. Uh, we just ask that it be done in a professional and civil manner. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, definitely, the more p participation, the better. And I think that people are respectful, especially here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. We realize that uh, we live on an island. Mm -hmm. We've all got to get along together. And this is a, you know, our chair does a great job. I, uh, he's got a hard job because he's got to keep people in order and keep the time. And sometimes, occasionally, he'll pound his, mm -hmm. his point pounder and say, you know, uh, point of order or so, so whatever it is that he needs to do. But. Uh, people, by and large, are very respectful because they're being heard. Yes. And if they didn't think they weren't being heard, maybe they wouldn't be uh, in that, mm -hmm. as respectful. But I think because their concerns are being listened to at this basic level by not only other board members on the neighborhood board, but other members of you know going up the food chain. Um, so I think it's a really a wonderful system that we've got here. Thank and you. Do you think that um, it strengthens the neighborhoods to have these neighborhood boards? Absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, nothing strengthens a neighborhood like a community. Um, and I can think of no other better way to bring a community together, common issues, common concerns. On this political level. Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, I would love to see more tie-in with other things on our boards, like with Rotary or the mm. Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts or, yeah. And that's, part of, and that's part of my job as the part of the PR team at our office is that we're constantly visiting Lions Clubs and Rotary Clubs and classrooms and college classrooms just to try and get as many people involved as we can. I mean, we're always encouraging people to participate, and it's truly a blessing just to be part of this neighborhood board system. And again, if people want more information, they can visit your website, which is honolulu.gov slash NCO. Slash NCO, or they can call you at 768 3710. 3710. Well, uh, gentlemen, like I said, we are we always run out of time too quickly, but it has been a delight to have you 
here today, and I sincerely uh, appreciate you coming down. So unfortunately, we are out of time, and so we are going to have to wrap it up. But I would like to invite you back again, uh, you. certainly, so we can talk some more about different things and maybe some specific examples. But for right now, uh, we're going to have to wrap it up. I'm uh, Winston Wells, out and about Think Tech Live Streaming Network Series. We've been talking with Sean Hamamoto, the Executive Director, and uh, James Skizuski from the Neighborhood Commission Office of Honolulu. Uh, with that, we appreciate you tuning in. We welcome your feedback. We'd like to thank our broadcast engineer, Brandy Lima, our technical producer, Ian Davidson, and our floor manager, Ray Sangalang, and to Jay Fidel, who, our executive director, who puts it all together. I'll see you here every other Monday at 3 p.m. for more of Out and About on ThinkTech Hawaii. Aloha, everyone.